DAOs, and it stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, are a kind of very interesting, promising, still I would still say flavor of the month kind of organization that operates on the blockchain that is supposed to, and when it works well, does allow for collective decision making, quote unquote, from the bottom up. That is to say, they do not have a central authority in the middle. They don't have the centralized decision maker that most constitutional systems ordinarily do have. They don't have, as it were, a president or a prime minister. And they also don't have a hierarchical system where like a staff or a board of directors that's elected makes decisions about where the assets of the organization should be put. Instead, the idea is that everybody collectively who's in the DAO can vote on how resources are going to be allocated. So they're kind of a strong um, wisdom of crowds idea. The idea is that if the collective makes the decisions, the odds are better that the collectivity will make good decisions. And that also tells you what the value proposition is. To invest in a DAO is in a way to bet on the wisdom of the crowd and not just the wisdom, but on the collective capacity of the crowd to work together. And that's a fascinating bet. And you can see from that formulation why it's very attractive and also why it's a bit utopian and why some people remain skeptical of the capacities of DAOs to do all of the different things that people hope that they'll be able to do. Because again, talk about using history to predict the future. If you look at the history of decentralized decision-making organizations, they've often existed, guilds, some labor unions, depending on how they were organized. They can do certain things really well. They can coordinate certain things really well. But there are certain kinds of decision-making that historically are really hard to make in a decentralized way. So when you're engaged in a conflict with another entity, when you're engaged in direct competition with another entity, when you need to coordinate action beyond the initial purposes and evolve your purposes, historically, it's been really hard for decentralized organizations to pull that off. So you want to pick and choose carefully with respect to what the DAO's purposes are and what its objectives are, and that should be helpful to the process of deciding you know, how, how do you want to be involved in a DAO and what will it be capable of accomplishing? So, <laughs> so someone in my household, it may or may not be me, may have uh, become somewhat, uh, I don't want to say infatuated, that's not the right word, but obsessed with researching a lot of the, the kind of nitty gritty aspects of, of DAOs and DAOs. I like saying DAO just because it makes me think Sounds of like the, Tao, like the Tao Te Ching, right? That, yes, that, totally. that, that, that character is actually Thal in, in Mandarin. Uh, so that's what, that's which I think is metaphorically sort of uh, appealing. Excellent. Much it, better branding, the, no question. Yeah, but the, the, in part because I think of the fact that not all iterations need to work. Right, but you will have massive trial and error over a compressed time period, which which is what gets so exciting to me. Because if you wanted to create a new corporate entity structure outside of C Corp, S Corp, LLC, like good luck. I mean, it's just going to take you forever to get there. But in the case of a DAO, you can really experiment and, in a sense, split test. Even though it might be two competing parties trying to collectively acquire assets, let's just say. And there are some that have become really interesting and really powerful, like Flamingo would be an example. And uh, I don't know if this has been done yet. Maybe it has, and I'm just getting up to speed on these things. But for instance, I have a foundation, and the foundation funds all sorts of research into, say, psychedelic therapeutics and so on for different supposedly intractable psychiatric conditions, although I would, I would veto the intractable part at this point. And it's a real pain in the ass to deal with the foundation as a tiny, tiny team. There's a lot of paperwork, all due respect to lawyers, lots of lawyers, lots of hours, uh, lots of filings, lots of, uh, to this day, uh, signatures of multiple people. If I want to accept, say, donations from other people, capital from other people to fund projects, there are 
various types of uh, red tape and headache involved. But you know, if there were the potential of bringing people into a DAO, collectively contributing, and then having some type of tax efficient slash tax tax deductible approach to donating to nonprofit ventures, my God, that would solve a huge pain point for me. I don't like being the centralized control point for this, right? And I guess that's that's more of a rant than a question, but are there any particular experiments that you're looking forward to seeing or hoping to see in this space? doesn't have to be DAO-specific, but it could be more broadly speaking. I mean, you just named a fascinating one. So to the extent that one of the things that these DAOs, I'll, I'll use your terminology. Um, uh, your <laughs> Sorry, I might be corrupting you. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Um, that they do is they facilitate decision-making about assigning assets, not only acquisition of assets, but assignment of assets. I'm really fascinated to see which things they'll succeed in doing really well and which things they'll do less well at. So take, for example, you know, a foundation where you want to do good in the world, but where you want to devote those assets is you know, a question that reasonable people could differ about. You know, part of it will be, would the people who participated in that decentralized autonomous organization be people who shared your worldview enough that you would think that was good? So, you know, if there are people who, if, if it's listeners to your podcast and people who read your books, there might be enough overlap that they would want to, for example, promote psychedelic research, which is having these extraordinary successes today. I don't know if they would have thought that 10 years ago when you started doing this right? or not. I mean, that's one of the interesting questions. Could a collective be as forward looking and as willing to take certain kind of risks as you were on this issue? We do know that when it comes to certain kinds of factual questions, crowds do really well. So if you ask a factual question, the collectivity might be great. When it comes to predictive questions, it's a more mixed bag, right? Totally. I mean, if the, if the crowd always did well on that, the markets would always make the correct predictions. They don't always make the correct <laughs> predictions, right? Because, because groups are subject, they're, they're human beings behind there, and they're subject to all of the, the biases and uncertainties that are, that are out there. You know, if the people who bought into the DAO were representative of the world, you know, you might have like a huge number of people who were adherents of the Chinese Communist Party and another large number of people who were deeply committed believing Muslims. I'm just thinking of, you know, groups that have a billion, more than a billion people, you know, and they might fight it out within the DAO about what they want to in invest in. And so, you know, again, I think it's very much about the purpose and who the participants are. And so those are the kinds of experiments that I think that are going to, as you say, in an iterated way, show us what these things are really good at and yeah. show us where these things run into some of the limitations of human coordinated behavior.